Hey everyone, my name is Dave and welcome to NTD Racing. This here behind me is Lefty, our desert race truck that just completed 1,200 miles of the Baja 1000. We've done a lot of videos on how we built Lefty right here in the speed shop. This today is part two of our axle building series. Last video, we showed you how we put the 538 gears and also a spool into the axle. This time we're gonna trust it. Check out our merch store. Please don't forget to subscribe. Let's get to it. It is time to get to the 14 bolt. We got a lot going on with this thing. A few of the simple mods we put on it are just some spacers. This uh, sets the tire out about two inches on each side. Also changes the bolt pattern such that Lefty and Honcho, both of our race trucks have the same bolt pattern in case we need to swap tires during the race or something like that. Um, we're going to, in the next episode, we're going to be putting in a spool and we're also changing the gears from, I think they're 373s to 538s, really uh, giving us a little bit of better gearing for the 40 inch tires we're going to be using on this thing. But today what we're doing is we're going to be making a truss. What does that mean? Is we're going to put a plate, piece of plate steel, half inch plate across the, uh, the back, a piece across the top so we can put some uh, rod ends on there and then another plate on the front. But first we need to do is figure out how do we basically define this, in, this profile right here in Fusion 360, the CAD program we're gonna use, and then eventually get it into the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR and cut out this half inch plate still on this thing. So what I'm doing here is you see I got two, a couple pieces of angle iron in here. Um, set across the back, I got these pieces, which basically keep us normalized or you know keep us tangent, tangential to that tube down there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna mark this point, this will be my zero point. And I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna mark right here where it makes a step up. And I'm gonna mark all the different profile changes all the way along. I'm gonna measure the distance on those profile changes. And then that'll, that'll give us basically an X and a Y axis that I can put into Fusion 360 and again, start building this truss, at least on this side, and we'll have to do the same thing on the other side. Let's go ahead and get to marking these things and then we'll drop the coordinates into Fusion 360. So as I get started with this, I got some pretty simple tools. This was, I accidentally ran my tape measure through a table saw and I've used this thing for a lot of stuff and I actually even ground off the end there so that I can kind of measure the distance down as we go along. I got a pen and if I need it at any point in time, I've got this uh, speed square, just kind of make sure I get the, the points right, but it's pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna mark right where the brake disc starts. And that's gonna be the zero point of this whole measurement. Uh, and then from there, I'll just start measuring off this thing right here. And it looks like at about this point right here. So I'll mark a line and I'm gonna say that is six and one half inches. And then I come all the way over here and sure enough, it's still, all the way up to that point right there to where it hits that flange, it is put a line in six and one half inches. So once I'm done getting all these coordinates, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start here with zero. I'm gonna put a, a measurement for all these points. I'll put those into Fusion 360. That'll let me flush out things like where is the center and what this whole thing is gonna look like that's gonna be cut over here. And then I'll start building the rest of the truss in Fusion 360. All right, so now I have this piece of angle iron on my table. It's got all the measurements across it. What I do is I generally set the tape measure to 10 at my zero point, and that way I don't have to deal with this little thing at the end or whatever. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take all these measurements and the distances. I'm gonna plug them into Fusion 360 and uh, we'll start building this truss. Let's do it. All right, uh, we'll just get started where I normally do. We're gonna work off of the X and Y axis on the front of this thing. We'll go over to sketch, and now we're gonna be sketching. And you know, since we're gonna be working off a of zero point working over it, we'll work off a of zero point uh, right here. So what I'm going to do is just assume that this is that, that where that angle iron was hanging across, and then all the dimensions will be kind of hanging down from that, if you will. So we'll just start with zero and then, at a zero, it was, I'm gonna hit hockey L, which is gonna give me the option to do a line. Actually, I'm gonna sketch first. I'm gonna sketch on that plane. Now it gives me all my sketch options. Hotkey L, it'll snap to the center there. 
and then this thing is 6.5 inches is what the axle is in general. Then the axle doesn't go all the way out there, but at least it kind of gives me a point there. And what I'm going to do is I made that a hard line. You can kind of see how that's a, a blue hard, solid line. I really wanted that to be a construction line. So I'm going to go over there and make it a, a dash line by selecting it then hitting construction lines. And the difference between a hard line and a, and a dash line is that it's not going to try to make a cut or a tool path for this dash line when I eventually make the whole thing over there. All right, so from there, uh, as you can kind of see, it comes across and it says at 29 inches or yeah, at 29 inches, it's gonna go ahead and, and that, that phase of the whole thing will stop. So I'm gonna say, from here, I'm gonna hit hotkey L and I'm gonna go over 29 minus 10 at 19 inches. I'm gonna snap it to that line. I'm gonna make another line. It's gonna come down and from there, it's now gonna, it's still gonna be, it's gonna jump up actually at that point. So it's gonna go from uh, 6.5 6 inches there and then it's going to jump up here to, I'm going to hit hockey L again, another point. It's going to go vertical to 5.5 is what I've got. Yeah, five and a half inches. We're just going to do a little game of connect the dots. So I'm going to have construction lines off because these are going to be tool paths eventually. Some of them are. Uh, and then from here, I'm going to go to my first dot, and that's going to be the basically the axle. Uh, from there to there, that's that five and a half inch. That's where the axle drop or jumps up. It has a little drop off here, but I'm just going to go straight across. If I need to fill that gap, I can with the MIG welder if I even decide to, to weld to that point. And here's kind of an interesting point, and this is where the axle does like a, uh, a kind of slope up with an outward, um, I'm kind of turning around looking at my axle right now, but it slopes up and it, and it basically... If I was to draw a straight line, it would look something like this and then that. And I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i show you what I'm gonna do later on with that, but I will, I will fix that later on. But that's where that slope kind of stops. And then the slope goes from there, pretty much a straight line to there. It becomes six and a half inches and now you, you can kind of see oh that sure looks like a 14 bolt there and now what i'm going to do is for these slopes what i'm going to try to do is just make it look what i think as close as i can to what i'm seeing over my shoulder it looks like something like that is that slope and then this slope same kind of thing i'm going to go between this line oh i just hit cut i don't want to do that control z all right i'm at this thing i'm going to go from here to here and it's going to look like Something like that, maybe. And, here's the thing. And, here. and I would say that's pretty darn close. And so, you know, my real goal here is to be able to get this like really close and then be able to drop it on. Okay, hit it with the angle grinder, pull it back off, drop it on, hit the angle grinder, and get it pretty darn close. But this is going to be the profile for the most part. And then now let's figure out how much of the profile we actually need. So the distance in between the rear where the axle is going to be swinging all, all i got is 32 inches so first thing i need to do really though is i need to find where is the center line of this whole thing so if i hit hotkey l and i draw a construction line and i say from the origin over here all the way over to where this thing ended right there I hit escape and then I hit hotkey L again. And I should be able to snap this thing to the center line. There, right there. You see the little triangle came up and it's telling me that that is the center point of that. That's the midpoint for that line. So if I click there and then now I draw a vertical line. Now I have a reference to, to use. I didn't mean to do that. Control Z. It was 90.2 degrees and I wanted it to be perpendicular. So I'm gonna hit. Hotkey L again, 
find that same point. Make sure it reads 90 degrees there. Now I got a good, a good construction line there. And you can kind of see that, wow, the center of this thing is actually slightly offset from the, uh, the pumpkin. And as I kind of look at the thing, sure enough, man, it's got, it's, uh, it's got more shaft on the right side, if you will, you can kind of see it here than it does on the, uh, the left side of this thing. So that's where the center is. And the center is also not coincident with the, uh, the yoke, uh, and the, uh, the spline, I guess the, the, uh, the pinion gear that it comes in. So from here, now I need to basically take only 32 inches of this thing. So let's hit a hotkey L and let's go from this line. And half of 32 is 16. That's where one side of the truss will end. And, and then I can just say mirror, mirror this line. And I'm gonna mirror it about this line and hit enter. And then now I've got my, my two ends. So this is where the truss is going to, to end. Now we got to kind of take a look at the top of this thing and I'll show you a picture here. Really need to take a look at the geometry of lefty. This uh, line right here kind of represents where the, that linkage is going to go on the top of the four link, uh, that big tie rod. And then this is kind of where down over here, it's going to be connected. This is 90 degrees or normal to the other uh, frame. And that uh, angle right there ends up being about 25 degrees. So here are the rod ends that we're going to use. And you can see they're massive. They're about three inches in diameter right there. Um, and we have this, some, um, we use the exact same misalignment spacers everywhere through the, uh, the truck. Maybe give a little strength right here, but it just makes them universal. And so what I have here, these are going to be how they're going to mount. These are about four inches by four inches gives it on, they're gonna be quarter inch plate, obviously made of cardboard right now. I have them set with that 25 degrees, so plus and plus, that gives me about 50 degrees of separation from these. And what I need to know is as I make this is, uh, one is will the bolts interfere with each other? So can I get a wrench in here? Can I get the nut in there? And those kinds of things when I put these things together. And then on the other side, you know, you need to be able to slide that bolt out. And when I've kind of, come up with is that this backing plate, and this is going to be the back plate of the truss that we're making right now, is going to be at the base about 10 inches, at the top about uh, eight and a half inches, and at the front, this whole base all the way across from here to here, such that I have a flat platform to weld onto, will be about 12 inches um, all the way across. So we'll go ahead back into Fusion 360 now that you've seen this, and we'll start putting those numbers in for the top of our truss. With that data now, we can start building the rest of this truss. So um, what I want is for this truss to be just, you know, about sitting about an inch off of the top. I like to keep, you know, stuff that's under high load as short a moment arm as I possibly can. So I'm going to hit hotkey L and kind of starting off of there, I'm going to, with a construction line, I'm going to go one and a quarter inches. Because remember, there's going to be a quarter inch plate that's the, basically the base in front of this thing. So 1.2 five inches will be where that is. And this is going to be the top of that plate. And this one's got to be 12 inches uh, across. So I'm going to say, I'm going to leave construction lines on and I'm going to say hockey. I'm going to put that at six and then hit enter. All right, and then uh, we're gonna go up a, an additional four and a quarter inches. I'm gonna give myself a little room to weld right there. So I'm gonna say hotkey L again, and I'm gonna say it go up 4.25 inches. So this is gonna be the top of that truss. Now we're gonna go again, uh, this can actually be a, a real line because it's actually going to be done. So hotkey L, I turn construction lines off. I'm going to go out here 4.25. That's going to be the top of that thing at eight inches long. Um, and then down here at the base, it's got to eventually trail off to uh, about 10 inches within an inch of the bottom. So. Again, that bolt misses, so let's go uh, hotkey L from here. Let's go up one inch. Construction lines on. And 
we'll go five inches. All right, construction lines off, hotkey L, we're starting to draw lines, it'll be the, the finish line. It's gonna kind of drop down, for the most part, close to straight down. It's gonna tell over to this point. You'll, it'll make sense why we're doing that here in a second. And then it's gonna also tell down here all the way to that point. And that is the top of this whole truss thing. And this whole thing is going to be repeated on both sides. So, and actually all the way down to the end. So I'm gonna go straight up two inches and then I'm gonna come over and connect those lines. And then I can come in here and basically soften these lines up a little bit. Andrew, that'll look good. All right. So now I got all I got half the thing done. So now what I can do is go hit the mirror function and I can just select all these things that I want to mirror. The whole truss here. Yeah. That should be good. And then I select the object I want to mirror it about. I got this construction line over here. And now I put the truss on the other side, I hit enter. And now you can see this truss taking shape. You can kind of see how it'll be. There'll be a platform here. The bearings will not right here. They're gonna use this as a backing to weld onto. So there's that whole part. We can actually cut this thing out. Now we can hotkey E, select it, the whole part. Brings me a point two five, a quarter inch. And now you can see what this whole back plate is just gonna look like. Pretty slick. All right, let's go ahead and cut this thing out on the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR. So I'm gonna go from here into manufacturing. So I go from the CAD computer-aided design over to computer-aided manufacturing. I go to setup and, you know, the way this thing looks, I think it's gonna make more sense. I'm gonna actually go back to design and I'm gonna hit hotkey M. I'm gonna tell it to move this thing and I'm gonna flip it upside down. Just because of the way that I cut my parts is I cut from the top left to the bottom, like I'm reading a book. So I want to basically start here at the top of my metal and hit setup. And there's my entry point. And I like to name it here. You can name it later if you want, but I name it right here. And then for cutting, uh, same thing I always say, I use the, somebody just posted, should I get the razor weld or should I get the hypertherm? And I'm like, man, I, I hate to say it, I love the razor weld. It's been working awesome. If it ever dies, I feel like if I don't say it, I'll jinx myself. So if it ever dies, I'm going to get a hypertherm, but this thing has been awesome. So I got the razor weld. You know, for uh, the quarter inch, I've been cutting it at 55 inches per minute. I do an entry at 45 inches per minute and exit at 65. Um, I'm gonna select the thing I'm gonna cut, and then this is pretty, it's only gonna do one pierce here and then cut the whole thing, but I'm gonna say 0 0.05 for the radius, I'm 90 for the entry angle, and then, yeah, 0.3. So give it time to do its whole thing. And I want it to, I want it to start cutting right over here. And the reason is, in general, you know, the bottom left, the most bottom left part I've got is where I usually start the cut because it's gonna cut here and it's, it's connected to the big, thick piece of metal. It's gonna cut up here, it's, and then once it gets over here, like let's say, for example, I started cutting here or something like that, and it cut all the way across, and by the time I get all the way back over here, it's really not holding on to anything anymore. It's holding on to some little tiny piece, and this thing can start moving on there. But if I start down here, when it gets down to the very end of the cut, man, it's still connected to the big sheet of metal, so that's why I do that. So post it, and then before I actually end up going here and post it, I'm gonna change my folder. So I just I made, created a new folder called Axle, so I can go back and find it pretty easily. And then since I'm cutting quarter inch, I actually I usually use a 0.2 second delay. I'm upping my delay to 0.3 seconds to get just a little bit longer to pierce through before it starts moving. And then I'll post it. It tells me it's ready to go over here to Fusion 3, uh, over to the Fire control, let's go to the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR, cut this thing out. So building Honcho and Lefty would, would just not be possible without the Langmuir Systems Crossfire XR or the Crossfire Pro that I had before. Both tables 
Simply amazing. If you would like one of these, check out the link in the description below. Or if you use code NTD Racing at checkout with Langmuir Systems, it saves you a hundred bucks. Off the plasma table, this doesn't look so bad. There's some trimming to be done. Uh, to get this thing to fit on here, I had to trim just a little bit, maybe an eighth of an inch off of here. It's set up pretty good, but you see the gap up here. And what I'm going to do is I need to take this side down with an angle grinder a little bit, and then it'll let it sit really nicely on there. And then from here, you know, this is the main piece that's going to weld to here. So this is the piece that's going to weld. We're going to do some heating, preheating on the uh, the axle because it's you know it's cast steel. Um, and then we'll do all that and we'll MIG weld this all the way across first. And then what we're going to do is we will put another plate across the top and then just repeat the process and put a second plate right here. However, that place is goes across. It really doesn't have anything to weld to maybe just slightly right here on the, uh, the, you know, where the tubes, the axle tubes come in there. So the main weld that's going to actually hold this thing to this whole uh, axle housing is going to be when this thing right here gets welded up to the top of the uh, the case right here and I'll show you how I do that. First thing I'm going to do is drop this thing into the vinegar bath and get it all nice and shiny all the mill scale off before I start doing any of the trimming and all that kind of stuff. All right here's where we are at with this. <laughs> Excuse the mess we got Honcho over here and while we're doing the ring gear all the gears and all that in Lefty in the truss we're also doing the same thing on Lefty trying to take advantage a little bit more of that top end RPM for more horsepower. Anyway, here's what we got with the truss. So I just made, I just tacked this piece in. So let's take a look at this one first, because this is the one we made on CAD. And what we had to do is we just had to kind of come in here and you can see where we marked, we shaved down there. We shaved a little bit over here. We cleaned up the axle, so we're ready to weld that. And that dropped this thing down just a little bit. And now you can kind of see, here's where we're, I'm gonna actually TIG weld across there on both sides. Maybe make two passes with that. That's gonna be a big gap. And I fix it on the next piece, but I'll be able to MIG weld through that, no problem. That'll be cast. So we're gonna do a little bit of, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna weld that and we'll, hopefully we won't get any cracks. But then I had to make the front piece. So I took that same CAD profile. And what I did is I know that that plate where we're gonna mount the uh, rod ends is gonna be right here. So I just said, all right, cut that whole thing off using the extrude. I just cut that part off of the, uh, the top. And then what I did is like, took that same profile and I added a little bit. I said, okay, I'm, I, I can actually come over here. You can see where I, I accounted for that thing to drop down. And then I just said, okay, extrude again. I just kind of made some marks over here. I did some measurements and I added so that it would come further out over here on both sides and just clear the pumpkin. Pretty easy uh, stuff to do in CAD and we cut that thing out. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking the measurement in between here. You know, what I want is these two plates to be as wide and as far as part as I possibly can get them. And right now this looks like it's about it and about three and a quarter inches is what that will be. So the plate that's, there's gonna be some plates that go in here and that's really gonna give it a lot of structure is it's gonna basically be fish mouth right here. I'll just basically, you know, cut them with a plasma cutter and then it's gonna come up and weld up the sides. So there's gonna be one here, one here, one there, one there. And that's gonna take advantage of welding to this uh, tube right here. Uh, as much as we can while well, this is super strong so that we're not relying you know hopefully not relying so much on this weld to cast which i'm just not a big fan of that i don't trust it as much as i do welding to a piece of extruded tube like this thing is right here so we're going to go ahead and put those things in and we'll uh, mock it up and we'll drop this thing in the vinegar bath get it cleaned up and we'll start welding Okay, here is a look at the truss now with those little braces inside. And you can kind of see how those go in. And I think what I'm gonna to do to fabricate this thing is I'm actually gonna tack weld these braces in place. I'm gonna cut the tack welds off of this, pull this plate off so I can go in and weld these in. I really think that the majority of the strength of this entire truss are gonna come from these pieces uh, right here. And then I'm gonna weld all the way up these seams on both sides. And then what we'll do is we got the last plate will just be 
a flat plate that'll go right across here. It's gonna weld across the back here. It's gonna come out a little bit beyond this piece over the top of it. I'll weld across the bottom of that one. And then it's gonna neck in right here and it's gonna go inside the two of these and I'll weld all the way down the insides of those. And the reason it's gonna kinda of come out right here is because to mount those bearings, the plates are gonna go, would go beyond this three and a quarter internal inches or three and three quarters out external. And I just wanna make sure they're welded all the way out. So I'll basically extend that plate out a little bit i think it'll look pretty good uh, once it's on there and i think it's gonna be really really rigid and besides that you know the other part that's holding this thing will just be that one mig weld across there to cast which psh, i don't trust cast anyway all right into my bath of five gallons of vinegar All right, so we got Bear over here heating up the uh, cast on this housing for this uh, 14 bolt. We're trying to get up to about 400, 450, 500 degrees. It's taking a long time to get up there. You can kind of see, you know, what the temperature is right now. We're getting there, about 400 degrees. So it'll be not long before we're welding. Today we're going to use Harbor Freight's uh, Vulcan Omni Pro 220. This has been kind of my go to MIG welder. We'll see how it does on this. I got it dialed all the way up. For this weld I think we're just about to start welding all right so now as this is cooling we're trying to keep both metals the same temperature as the temperature kind of comes down so it's pretty hot the cast is you can kind of see is about 400 something like that we're trying to keep this metal up about the same temperature and it's cooling down a little bit faster just because it's less metal, it's out there in the air. So that's why we got the map gas on that. All right, so we let the temperatures of the plate still get down to about 300 degrees. The cast was about 350, somewhere in there. And at that point, what we did is we just wrapped this thing up. So I have two layers of fiberglass um, cloth over this and then two shipping blankets. And what we're trying to do is hold the heat in there and let it cool down slowly. Hopefully it won't create any tension and crack those those welds. We'll know in the morning, but so far haven't heard anything. Uh, so it's looking good so far. All right, I got ahead of this morning. This thing was still hot when I took the blankets off. I think that that is kind of one of the key things is that you let everything cool down slowly. You try to keep this material, the same temperature as this material, as long as you possibly can to kind of keep the stresses down. Because as this one cools, it will contract. And then if it cools faster than this one, it contracts more pow, you get a crack. But I don't see any cracks in this. And so far, I'm pretty happy with the weld. The Harbor Freight welder, I think it does a great job. I've been using it for a long time. This is really the area I'm mostly concerned with here because you can kind of think about it. This is the part of the truss that is out in space is really kind of relying on the top of the axle housing to get some strength for all of the loading. It's going to take this direction uh, right here. Um, I thought pretty good penetration. I'm not a good MIG welder. I'm terrible at MIG welding, but you can kind of see right here. Here's kind of evidence of how bad I am, but that's in, that's in a place that really doesn't matter. This is the one that matters and I feel like it looks uh, decent. Pretty good penetration, so I'm happy with that. Everything is welded up now. Anywhere that I could reach with a TIG welder, I TIG welded, and then if I couldn't, I tried to do my best with the MIG weld. I'm happy I'm gonna cover this whole thing up right now with this plate right here, cover up those nasty MIG welds. Anyway, this is gonna go across the top like this. This is where the rod ends are gonna land, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bend on this one and bend on that side and then we'll try to fit it up inside here and then weld this thing on and then we'll get the rod ends welded on top. 13 plus 13, 26, one degree of spring back. I'm looking for 25 degrees to be the result. So let's see how close we can get. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right there.
Okay, the rod end mounts are in here and you can kind of see I have enough clearance for the bolts that I can run them in. I can also pull the bolts out, not interfering with the back of this thing. These are ready to be welded in. So what I'm going to do is with it the way it is right now, I'm gonna tack weld these plates in place. I'm gonna pull these off the back and that will give me the best opportunity to get good welds on these plates and then put it all back together and then get good welds on these plates. All right, here is a quick look at the finished product of this, uh, this axle, and I think it came out great. This is after 1,200 miles of the Baja 1000. You can kind of see how the whole truss has gone on there and how it held up. The parts I, I don't think I showed you when I was building this is these pads here, which are the landing pads for the, uh, the four inch bump stops from King. And then also where our trailing arm kind of goes in here, it's just, just another wash, rinse and repeat as far as like making brackets and those kinds of things. And if you go back and look in some of my previous videos, I show you how I did all the geometries for a four link suspension. And I get that off of Crawlpedia, the guys over at Filthy Motorsports make a really good resource on how to make the geometries for the four link that you want for your application and those kinds of things. And then on the back side, you can kind of see I put a reinforced differential cover after we did a spool and we also did the uh, 538 gears for that re-gear. That's the previous video, like I mentioned before. Uh, I think these axles are great. They're dirt cheap. They're totally bulletproof. Those axle housings are just huge. They're heavy. That's maybe one of the problems as far as a high performance type application. But I'll tell you what, we had these things up to what, 85, 86 miles per hour over the bumps in the desert. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. This thing, I'm guessing we'll probably be able to get over 100 miles per hour in the future. And then one final thing, sometimes we do get questions on whether or not we shave the bottom of the housing down there. And we don't do that. And the reason is it doesn't matter what size this housing is at the bottom, we're hitting something. And the axle housing down there has got to be an inch and a half thick. It is such a huge piece of cast and it holds up to taking some really big blows from rocks. We take some huge hits on this thing and we just need that extra strength in there just so it just kind of bounces off rocks and those kinds of things. It does a really good job. All right, we have a few things to do before we get to the Mint 400 coming up here in a couple months. I hope you will consider following us as we work with some of our partners as we put a new jack on this thing. We totally replace the lights on the front of the truck, make it look a whole lot cooler, fix the fiberglass, whatever. Anyway, I can't wait to see you next week. Take care of yourself.